Have you ever wondered what sparked the flames of the Vietnam War, a conflict that changed the world? Let's travel back in time, when the French ruled the roost in Vietnam. It was a colonial period that lasted for more than six decades, from the mid-19th century to the mid-20th. The French influence was so pervasive that it seeped into every aspect of Vietnamese life. But with time, the Vietnamese yearned for freedom and independence, a desire that would ignite the first sparks of resistance. In this volatile atmosphere, a figure emerged who would forever change the course of Vietnam's history. His name was Ho Chi Minh, a man of humble beginnings who would rise to become the leader of the Viet Minh, the Vietnamese Independence League. His charisma and determination galvanized the Vietnamese people, fueling their desire for independence. But the path to independence was fraught with obstacles. The French were not willing to give up their colonial hold without a fight, and the Vietnamese resistance was met with brutal force. The struggle for independence culminated in the Battle of Dien Bien Phu in 1954, a turning point that led to the end of French colonial rule in Vietnam. The aftermath of the battle paved the way for the Geneva Conference, an international gathering aimed at resolving the crisis in Vietnam. One of the key outcomes of the conference was the division of Vietnam into North and South along the 17th parallel. The North, led by Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Minh, was backed by the Communist bloc. The South, on the other hand, was supported by the United States and other non-communist allies. This division marked a significant turning point in the history of Vietnam. It set the stage for a conflict that would extend beyond the borders of Vietnam, drawing in superpowers and turning the country into a battleground for ideological supremacy. And so, the stage was set for a conflict that would shake the world. With the division of Vietnam, the fuse of conflict had been lit. But how did America get involved? Well, our tale of American involvement begins with a seemingly minor incident on the waters of the Gulf of Tonkin. In August of 1964, two U.S. naval destroyers reported coming under fire from North Vietnamese naval vessels. Whether or not these attacks actually happened remains a point of contention, but the incident gave President Lyndon B. Johnson the political cover he needed to ramp up American involvement in Vietnam. The resulting Gulf of Tonkin resolution essentially gave Johnson carte blanche to conduct military operations in Southeast Asia without a formal declaration of war. But why was America so keen to get involved in a struggle halfway around the world? The answer lies in the domino theory, a key component of Cold War thinking. This theory maintained that if one country in a region fell to communism, others would soon follow. Vietnam, divided between a communist north and a democratic south, was viewed as a crucial bulwark against the spread of communism in Southeast Asia. American involvement didn't stop at political posturing. Under Presidents Kennedy and Johnson, the U.S. commitment escalated dramatically. Kennedy, in his short term, increased the number of military advisors in South Vietnam from a few hundred to over 16,000. Johnson, following the Gulf of Tonkin incident, went even further. He initiated a massive bombing campaign against North Vietnam and authorized the deployment of combat troops. By the end of 1965, over 100,000 American soldiers were fighting in Vietnam. This escalation didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual process, fueled by Cold War fears and political calculations. It was also a decision that would have profound and lasting impacts, not just for the U.S. but for Vietnam and the wider world. Thus, the U.S. found itself entangled in a conflict far from home. The war was now in full swing, with battles raging across the jungles of Vietnam. But what were the key events at this point? The Tet Offensive was one of the most significant turning points. In early 1968, the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese forces launched a series of surprise attacks throughout South Vietnam during the Lunar New Year, or Tet. The intensity of the offensive took both the American military and public by surprise challenging the perception that the U.S. was winning the war. Around the same time, the My Lai massacre occurred, further shocking the world. American soldiers killed more than 500 unarmed Vietnamese civilians, including women, children, and the elderly. The event was initially covered up, but when it came to light, it caused global outrage and further eroded public support for the war in the U.S. back home in America. Anti-war sentiments were growing. Protests sprouted in universities and public spaces across the country. The draft, which compelled young men to serve in the war, became a contentious issue. The iconic protest at Kent State University in 1970, where four students were killed by National Guardsmen, underscored the deep divisions within American society. The media played a pivotal role during this period. For the first time, 
the brutal realities of war were broadcast into living rooms across America. Images and reports of the Tet Offensive, My Lai Massacre, and heated protests fueled public disillusionment, leading many to question the U.S.'s role in the conflict. The Vietnam War was more than a series of battles fought in far-off jungles. It was a cultural and societal conflict that shook the foundations of American society. The war's peak was characterized not only by the ferocity of the fighting, but also by the dramatic shifts in public opinion and the profound impact it had on the American home front. Amidst the chaos of war, the winds of change were beginning to blow. As the 70s dawned, the end of the war was in sight. But how did it all come to an end? Let's delve into the final chapters of the Vietnam War. President Nixon's Vietnamization policy took center stage in the late 60s and early 70s. Vietnamization was more than a catchy term. It was a strategy for the gradual withdrawal of U.S. troops from Vietnam. The idea was to shift the burden of combat to the South Vietnamese, allowing them to take over their own defense, thereby reducing American involvement. This policy reflected the desire of many Americans to see an end to the war and their countrymen returning home. Yet the war didn't end with the initiation of Vietnamization. The Paris Peace Accords, signed in January of 1973, were a crucial turning point. This agreement promised a ceasefire and the withdrawal of all remaining U.S. forces. It seemed like a beacon of hope, a promise of peace at last. But the reality was, the war was far from over for the Vietnamese. In the wake of the U.S. withdrawal, the North Vietnamese forces pushed forward, testing the resilience and preparedness of the South Vietnamese troops. Their ultimate goal was the fall of Saigon, the South's capital. The fall of Saigon in April of 1975 marked the end of the Vietnam War. The North Vietnamese Army captured the city symbolizing the collapse of the South Vietnamese government. It was a day of victory for the North, a day of defeat for the South, and a day of relief for the world that had been watching this war unfold for over a decade. The end of the Vietnam War was a complex and painful process. It was marked by political maneuvering, military strategies, and most importantly, the resilience and endurance of the Vietnamese people. And so, after years of bloodshed, the war came to an end. But the story of the Vietnam War doesn't stop there. The echoes of this conflict are still heard today, shaping the world as we know it. The Vietnam War left a profound impact on all parties involved, but what are the key takeaways from this conflict? The Vietnam War was a tumultuous period in history that shook the world to its core. Its impact was far-reaching and its scars still linger, shaping the perspectives of nations and individuals on war and conflict. Looking first at Vietnam, the war's impact was devastating. Millions of lives were lost, and the country's infrastructure was ravaged. Yet, amidst these ashes, Vietnam rose, showing a remarkable resilience. Today, the country stands as a testament to the strength of the human spirit, its bustling streets and rising skyscrapers a stark contrast to the battlefields of the past. Over in the United States, the war sparked a radical shift in public opinion. The Vietnam War was the first to be broadcast into living rooms, bringing the harsh realities of conflict into stark view. The images of loss and devastation led to widespread protests, igniting a powerful anti-war movement that challenged the government's narrative. This shift in public sentiment forever changed the way the U.S. engages in and perceives war, making transparency and public consent critical components of any military intervention. On a global scale, the Vietnam War showcased the potential pitfalls of interventionism, it served as a lesson about the complexity of foreign conflicts and the dangers of imposing one's ideology on another nation. It underlined the importance of understanding cultural and historical contexts before jumping into a conflict, a lesson that continues to resonate in international relations today. The war also signaled a shift in global power dynamics. It marked the beginning of the end for colonial powers and the rise of new independent nations. It demonstrated that even a superpower could be challenged, reshaping the geopolitical landscape in a profound way. The Vietnam War, a conflict that changed the world, serves as a stark reminder of the costs of war. It reminds us of the human lives at stake, the societal upheaval that follows, and the enduring impact on nations and the world. It underscores the importance of diplomacy, understanding, and empathy in navigating our global community. That was a brief overview of the Vietnam War, a conflict that still resonates today. From its unseen origins to the peak of the struggle, and finally its poignant end, each phase paints a compelling narrative. This historical event, fraught with tension and transformation, invites further exploration. 
we encourage you to delve deeper, form your own opinions, and join the discourse. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more historical content. Until our next journey into the past, stay curious and keep learning.